I'm Friso Hermans. I teach physics at Chapag School. There's a, a few different kinds of things that we do frequently, and it's all around the idea of learning science by doing science. So I want to have the students um, talking to each other about their results. I want the students to be designing experiments. I want the students to be collecting the data, interpreting the data, and deciding what it means. I'm there to help them. I'm here, there to pull their ideas together. I'm there to articulate what they're saying. But I want to be there to assist them in developing their scientific thinking, not to do the scientific thinking for them. This last lab that we did, I had spent a fair amount of time showing them techniques because it was new equipment, it was new software. But my showing them wasn't, here's how you do the lab. It was, here's how the equipment work. Now you guys go do the lab. Then the collection of data, usually a graph will come out of the data, a graph that's intended to illustrate the relationship that students are looking for to see whether there is a relationship of interest. And then the interpretation of the graph will wind up with an equation and the equation then winds up being the relationship that we were looking for in the first place. So that was an experiment to look at uh, Newton's second law, although I didn't call it that until well after the experiment was completely finished. Um, we were looking at factors that affect acceleration. The students decided in watching a fan cart, which is a, a low friction cart that rolls on a track that has a fan attached to it. And when you turn on the fan, the cart changes its velocity as it moves down the track. And so that allows them to study the factors that would affect the acceleration of the cart. And they decide that it's the force of the fan and it's the mass of the cart. And so that winds up with the three variables that we're testing. And we discussed a way that we would be able to control for one of the variables while we tested the other variable. These carts have sensors built into them, so it allowed them to measure the acceleration on the cart as well as measure the force. And they had to write that data down. So it was fairly complex in terms of they needed to measure the, the velocity of the cart and then get the slope of the velocity time graph to get the acceleration. And they also had to measure the force by uh, running the cart up against the end of the track. And so those were the techniques that they used to get their measurements of acceleration and force. But then the idea was to graph force versus the acceleration to see what the relationship between those two things were. So once they got their data for force and acceleration, they then constructed a graph using a different computer program. So there's a lot of technology in this lab. They used graphical analysis for that. What they got out of it, provided they had worked carefully, they get a straight line through the origin. And then each group wound up sketching their graph on a whiteboard and writing the equation that goes along with that. There was an opportunity for students to ask each other questions. There was an opportunity for me to ask them questions to clarify. Um, and my questions are always along the lines of trying to get the students to maybe consider what they've represented is consistent with what they understand and with the good mathematical practices and if it's consistent with what they observed. I very rarely will just tell students, this is what you should have gotten. Um, I try to avoid ever doing that. I want the students, perhaps from a question of mine, to consider uh, their lo whether their logic is internally consistent, and then if there's a change that needs to be made, I want them to make the change based on, oh, yeah, that's not going to work because that's not consistent. In this group, they really were talking to each other a lot. And as they were talking, they were just fixing the inconsistencies without me even being there, which to me is the ideal. If I'm not part of the conversation and it's students talking to students, I think that's where the greatest learning is happening. The entire world of science teaching is moving in this direction. It's a big change uh, from being an idea where the teacher tells the students and, the, and shows the students how to do it and the students do it and approach the teacher's performance on it is being replaced by one where the students are thinking as scientists based on evidence that they collect. It's a big change in the world of science teaching. It's an exciting change to be part of. And having done this now for seven years, I wouldn't ever want to go back doing it any other way. Because you're learning how the students think, you're watching them think, and being there to help guide their thought process, which is there's just nothing I'd rather do.